Okay, let's talk about how to add a host to the SCVMM or the System Center Virtual Machine Manager. Now, I haven't walked through an install of the SCVMM. It's actually a fairly, um, a fairly complex install, but Microsoft has a uh, evaluation of it you can download. So if you do a search for download SCVMM, they actually give it to you on a VHD. So you'll download a bunch of files and you'll run an exe that puts them all together into a vhd there will also be about a 12 page word document that talks you through what you need to do and so we have to have a domain controller we have to join the virtual machine to a domain uh, once we create a virtual machine based on the vhd then we have to configure uh, sql server uh, current version of it. I think the one that's included on the download is 2014. And then uh, you can configure SCVMM. And that brings us up to this spot right here. And I have my System Center Virtual Machine Manager already uh, running. Let's just do a real quick overview. Here we have all of our VMs and services. And you'll see tenants, clouds, Azure subscriptions, VM networks, storage, and then all hosts, where we can see the hosts that I've already got attached. We have the fabric, which is where we can see our hosts, our uh, virtual networking, so MAC address pools, load balancers, port profiles, and then you can see our storage configurations here. And that, the servers, the networking, the storage, that comprises the fabric. The library is your library resources, so your templates, your profiles, your library servers, so here's where you can really start digging in and playing with it. But the first thing we need to do is we need to add a virtual machine uh, or a Hyper-V. There we go. A Hyper-V server to SCVMM. So you do that. Let me come back here. I'm going to go to Fabric. There's a couple of ways we can do this. So I'm going to go to Fabric and Add Resources. And you'll notice here I can add Hyper-V hosts and clusters. I can add VMware ESXi hosts and clusters, a library server, PXE server, and more tools down here. And then here are some resources that I already have. So I have three host computers. And then this one is my virtual machine that I'm running off of that VHD that I downloaded from Microsoft. That's our library and virtual machine manager server. All right, so I want to add another host. So I'm going to go to add resources and I'm going to add Hyper-V hosts and clusters. I'm actually going to stop myself at this point because there's something that I need to do first. So we're going to go to my other server and I'm going to bring up my remote desktop connection, move it over here so you can see it, and put in the IP address of the server that I want to add. Now, this works better if they're all in the same domain. Go ahead and log in here real quick. They don't have to be, but I find it just runs a little bit easier. All right, so let me bring this virtual machine over. Okay, now I've got them in the same domain. I've got them all running trial copies of the software right now. So I've got them all in the same domain. And what I want to do now is I want to turn the firewall off. Now, alternatively, I could open up ports on the firewall, but we're just going to do this the quick and dirty way and get it done fast. So I'm going to go to my Windows firewall and I'm going to turn off my domain network and the system's going to complain about that a little bit, but it'll let me do it. So I'm going to turn that off. That way I don't have to worry about opening up the specific ports. And then the next thing I need to do is I need to add the multipath IO feature. So I'm going to go to add roles and features. And next, next, this server. It's not a role. It's actually a feature called multipath IO. And it's right here. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and click next and install. And while that is busy installing, the other thing that you're going to want to make sure of is that your remote management is currently enabled. So my multipath IO isn't quite done yet. We're going to go ahead and give it a second. I'm going to come back to my dashboard. And it should be done any moment. Now, it's not actually going to require me to do anything once. There we go. Once it finishes. So I'm just going to close this. And this is going to bring me back to my added resource. So that server should be ready for me to add it now. 
So you know this like can do a Windows server in a trusted Active Directory domain and an untrusted on a perimeter network, physical computers to be provisioned as virtual hosts. I'm going to stick with this one because I'm in a the same Active Directory domain. But go ahead and give it my local or my domain administrator account. And then I'm going to put in the name of it. And because I should have, um, I should have name resolution set up, that should find it. We're still searching. We'll see if it finds it here in a second. And it is saying it did not find it. So let me try this by IP address. There we go. I misspelled it. That'll work every single time. Okay. And then I'm going to add it to the all hosts group. I could put it in a new group if I had additional groups to find, but I don't have any. I just want them all grouped into one. So that goes into my all hosts. If this is currently being managed by another VMM server, I need to tell it to reassociate. It's not. I can add a specific path where I want things to be hosted. I don't care about that or where I want virtual machines to be placed. I'm going to leave that as all default. So I'm going to click next and finish. And this should attempt to add it. So here's my adding virtual machine. You'll notice down here I had a few of them fail. I've actually isolated that I've got a problem with this particular host that I'm not going to worry about dealing with yet. So we're adding a host. We're at 50% done. And it should take us through 50 to 66% and then finish off. And this will take it a little bit because it's actually copying a the VMM agent. In fact, let me see right here. It's saying the files needed to install the agent. By the way, this is a lie. There's another issue. But it illustrates the point that we're copying over an agent from the VMM service the agent software from the VMM server over to our host machine. It's just about done now. And then it finishes with a warning. It needs to be rebooted in order to complete the network virtualization feature. So recommended action is to reboot the host. Perfect though, at that point, we actually have it added. So I can come in here and I see I have a new host added and now I will be able to provision services on that particular host. So that's pretty much all we got to do in order to set up a new host. Now, remember, <clears throat> you got to have rights on it. That's why we had to put in that username and password. Um, you need to make sure that you have a firewall ability to access it. So if you're in a production environment, you're probably going to add firewall rules to make sure you can. If you're in a test environment, just evaluating, and these things are going to be shut down anyway, then once you get done playing with them, then it doesn't matter if you drop your firewall. But you also need that multipath IO and then to reboot afterwards. And that's it. That's how we add a new host to be managed by a CVMM.